Hey, thank you again for attending my uh, my workshop portion of Cabin Fever Super Picking Party 2016. Um, I'm going to go over the handout, and uh, this is for people seeking to uh, expand in backup and or even to break into backup. Now, this is uh, I assume this isn't uh, too elementary for you if you attended my portion of the workshop. Uh, <laughs> We're going to start a handout. Um, the first line says, I'm going to be looking over here a little bit because that's where my paper is. I want to make sure I'm giving you the right information. So we're looking at uh, the first line. And there's, there's a measure and then a little piece of a measure with one note on it. And that's where I want to start. I want to start right there. And it says shape two. Now shape two is what I'm going to call what you probably refer to as a D shape. So... I have noted the right hand, middle, index, thumb, index, thumb, index, thumb. That's kind of important. Um, sometimes we run across things that weren't exactly played that way by the artist. I'm going to probably convey to you um, and share with you that I want to convey this to you in a way that makes um, probably the most sense if you're going to learn to do this in the way that I think is going to be um, good for you long term. Uh, you may have to find a way that works best for you. And remember, if something's happening, you can't get up to a particular speed or something's not going quite right, refer back to your handout. Might help you. Might not. But, you know, we all have to find our own way of doing things and making them happen. So I'm going to start off with the first one. The first one is in what I call shape two. This is in a D shape. Um, uh, that's it. Now that's a really common. See my right hand? More importantly, look at my, uh, look at my left hand. Really not much going on there. Now notice that I didn't start. That would be horribly uh, 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 awkward, and uh, it'd be a mess to try to recover from. Uh, but I do see uh, people doing things like this all the time. Also, people I see people catching this shape like this, and you know what? It kind of works, but it really limits your ability. Cover. And if you don't have this particular shape sealed off, it is no, it's no longer portable unless it's, it's not portable rather, unless it's, because no matter where you move this, it's a different chord. And if you're familiar with something called um, a chromatic uh, uh, scale, uh, it's D, D sharp or E flat, E, F. No, no F sharp, I mean, yeah, no E sharp or F flat. Uh, Einstein said E equals F flat. That's a bad pun. So, you no know, matter where you move this, here it's G. So you can do the same lick learned in D. Up here, now it's G. Here it's A. Here it's F. Oh, here it's uh, C. D. E. Another F, and all the way up here is another G. But if you hold these, if you'll do what I call keep the kids on the bus, this is really good though. Um, Tonight I'm sad, my heart is weary, wondering if I'm wrong or right. All three of those shapes, D, G, A in this case, pardon my singing, I'm, uh, I'm singing for demonstration purposes, and if you enjoy it, <laughs> you've got problems. Anyway, moving on to the next line, um, it's the same line rather, it's just the measures three and four expand on this. <laughs> So 
you're walking down root first, sixth, second, fifth. I'm talking about root six, fifth, third, root six, fifth, third. Those are the uh, one, six, five, three. Those are the notes of the scale. The do, 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 re, mi, fa, so, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, six, t, seven, do, and on and on. So these are the notes I'm referring to. If you get in touch with this and how these notes work, you'll never have to rely on a chord chart again. Bad for the chord chart company people, but really good for you. So this. Tonight, I'm sad my heart is weary. Wondering if I'm wrong or right. So that's kind of nice. You know, you can do that. Now let's, let's explore um, the next line. You can just skip a couple of measures. This is a... This is the first page of about a 25-page handout I use to teach. So now, the next line, measure 7 and 8, there's, uh, we're going to play it with a double tonic. Now, something that isn't, um, isn't done at this particular place is a slide. Now, when you slide, sliding into this tonic is what I'm talking about. I don't want you to slide just into this note because then you have to solidify the rest of this shape and then recover from your you're trying to do one note at a time you can't do that leave all the kids on the bus slide the whole shape in order to get this one note now you're there That can be added to the filler above. Tonight I'm sad, my heart is weary. Wondering if I'm wrong or right. Um, measure nine. We're going still in the shape two, except we've just brought this up to G. I just demonstrated this. Lord. It's sort of the same thing. Yeah. Now, the last measure on that line, measure 12, uh, we're going into still the same shape. I'm up here at G now, but look, you can do any of these. Sort of a Reno-y thing. You can do it up here at D. G, F, uh, gosh, if you, A, remember this is still in this, what you would probably call a D shape, I'm calling it shape two, and the reason I'm calling it shape two is the tonic of the note after which the chord is named is found on the second string, there's the G note, that's a G chord, D note, that's a D chord, F, um, so this this one is sort of a single string reno. The trick to this is leave these other two on right in place. Only move them when you need to. This is your anchor. This is what's keeping your hand steady. And you can attach the rest of these licks, uh, the rest of these tags to that. Tonight I'm sad my heart is weary. a couple of these to each other that's kind of what we're all doing even the people who are who are wonderful at what they're doing they're just stringing together shapes and scale bits and they may or may not be able to quantify it but this is kind of what's happening now moving on to measure 14 measure 14 is written um 
<coughs> in G. Okay, we just covered that. Uh, measure 16. This is written in A. Pardon me. Oops, it's a banjo. Um, this is written in A. So, I'm going to play it. You'll probably recognize it if you don't already know it. Again, I'm, I'm with the thumb. Thumb, index, thumb, index, thumb, index, thumb. It starts on the first string. Now, the one thing you'll notice I'm doing, I'm very trying to use a lot of left hand efficiency. And when I'm done with that lick, everything goes back to home, back to the shape. Back. Now, just because this was written in A, doesn't mean you can't play it in G. Just A down a whole step or two frets is G. Tonight I've said my heart is weary. Wondering if I'm wrong or right. There it is in D. And you'll recognize this one, but that's all. Oh, that's worth all the practice you can give it. Uh, all these shapes are. Um, a side note, if you can practice mastering, uh, if you can master the, the uh, skill of going from shape to shape at will, even on the otter shapes, well, that really helps too. If you can instantly do that, it, oh, it's wonderful. So, we've covered that. We are going to, uh, it, it's a little, uh, ah, you know what? Measure 16 was, measure 18 was adding that, uh, the trick to both or all these that we've started now is when you're counting these and when you play them in the, the measures that, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, and four, and one. They all start on the two. So, one, two, three. Tonight I've said my heart is weary. Wondering if I'm wrong or right. The word right that came in on the one. Mm -hmm. starting to catch on. Even if you can't count that yet, don't worry about it. Just listen to it and play along. Listen to other people. Listen to recordings. Flat and Scrubs, wonderful. Uh, Bluegrass Album Band, wonderful. God, I can just go on and on. The Osborne Brothers. Uh, it, it's lots and lots of great things to listen to if you're getting into the meat and potatoes of this particular uh, banjo thing. So let's, let's move on now. And I am at the end of next to the line, last uh, line here, and we are we are looking at a D fragmented shape to F three. That's what that means, and that is this. It's just the first two of these, and I like to catch it with the second and third fingers. You piano or former piano people, this is your third and fourth fingers. I don't understand. Well, it doesn't matter. But strings, this is three and four, or your middle and ring. Now, what I'm doing here, very efficiently, this is the flatted third note of this scale. Root, third, fifth. Root, flat, third, fifth. But we're not doing a minor. We're doing a uh, bluesy thing. And look, it's the same notes out of this shape. That's, that's kind of what we're doing there. We're doing two and three and four and one. Ooh, look. So if you know where these scale notes are, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. just keep going. You're only bound by the nut 
from the nut to the last fret. So you're still going to be playing flat third, third, fifth, sixth, flat third, third, root. Oh, now we're back in familiar territory until we did this. So this is still do, re, mi, flat third, third, fifth, sixth, flat third, third, open four string, third. Tonight, I'm sad my heart is weary. these things up that's that's uh that's probably uh some of the better um uh, well those are a few that will get you a lot of mileage for your play for playing back up and i did this in d but you can play this in anywhere you want that old rain well you might be able to i need to sing it somewhere that old playing. Thank you very much for attending my portion of the workshop. Please uh, write me, richie at acousticbox.com. It's on my website. You're on it now, and you have a fantastic one. Enjoy, and uh, contact me if you need any help. Thank you.